So in this class, we'll be talking about the adaptation of snails, and we'll also be to start to talk about the adaptation of plants, the plants in terrestrial habitats and in aquatic habitats. So let's start with the adaptation of snails, the structural adaptation of snails. Now, snails possess a calcareous cell to, shell to avoid desiccation. They have shells that prevent loss of water, and also those shells help to protect them from danger. Another adaptation that a snail, snail possesses is it secretes mucus to survive period of unfavorable conditions. So that mucus encloses or covers up the snail to survive hot or dry conditions. Now this process by which the snail goes into a state of rest or covers up itself to survive an unfavorable dry or hot condition is called estivation. Another structural adaptation of the snail is the possession of muscular foot for movement. Another one is the presence of oculiferous tentacles for sight and sensitivity. The tentacles are what the snail uses to see. So the tentacles are specialized to see, unlike in some other organisms like the, like the octopus. The octopus tentacles are not oculiferous, but snail's tentacles are oculiferous for sight and sensitivity. Now let's talk about the plants now, the different adaptation that a plant has to the different habitats. Let's talk about the different types of plants we have. We have two major types of plants. We have the mesophytes and the hydrophytes. The mesophytes, as the name implies, are terrestrial plants, plants found on land. And the hydrophytes are aquatic plants, plants found on water or submerged inside water. Now, let's talk about the adaptive features or the adaptation that aquatic plants, hydrophytes, possess that enable them to survive in an aquatic habitat. First one is the possession of breathing roots by the hydrophytes, which grows above the water level to help them get enough oxygen for respiration. So aquatic plants possess breathing roots that enable them to, to tap oxygen from above the water level. Another adaptation of the aquatic plants is the possession of large air cavities called erenchyma that serve as a means of buoyancy and also for storing of gases for respiration. Another adaptation of aquatic plants is the possession of photosynthetic materials and chloroplasts that make use of less light in the water for photosynthesis because the, what, the light that is penetrated into the water is limited. So aquatic plants possess a specific kind of chloroplast that makes use of less light for photosynthesis. Another adaptation of aquatic plants, the hydrophytes, is the possession of hairy leaves and thin waxy cuticle to repel rain and extra water that they do not need. So they have hairy leaves and thin waxy cuticle to, prevent, to re reduce the amount of excess water entering into the plants. Also, another adaptation of the aquatic plants, the hydrophytes, is they have surfaces that float on water and they also have broad leaves that enable the, uh, the plants to survive under the, to stay on top of the water and also to trap light for photosynthesis. Now, let's talk about examples of the hydrophytes. We have the water lily, the water hyacinth, water weeds, the dock weed, and water cabbages. With that, we've come to the end of today's class. Next class, we'll be discussing the terrestrial plants, the different types of terrestrial plants we have, and their specific adaptation to their habitat. <laughs>